Dobry wieczór. Nazywam się Seweren Ozdowski. Jestem organizatorem konferencji na temat spójności społeczeństwa australijskiego. Jest to duża konferencja, około 400 osób z wszystkich stanów Australii. Najbardziej znani naukowcy pracujący w tej dziedzinie, przywódcy politycznie, polityczni, łącznie z gubernatorem generalnym, z Peter Cosgrove, który otworzy konferencję za chwilę. Będziemy mieli tak samo ludzi z różnych społeczności, włączając społeczność muzułmańską, społeczności induskie, chińskie. Tak samo jest spora grupa Polaków tutaj. Będziemy się zastanawiać nad tym, jak wielokulturowość australijska i polityki australijskie pomagają do tego, żeby nasze społeczeństwo trzymało się spójnie, razem, żeby nie powstały niepotrzebne konflikty i co ewentualnie dalej można robić, żeby utrzymywać ten sukces, jaki został skreowany powojenną imigracją i kontynuuje po dziś dzień. W tej chwili prawie połowa Australijczyków ma jakąś konekcję migracyjną zagraniczną. To jest wielka ilość. To jest trzeci kraj na świecie z tak wielką różnorodnością społeczną. Największa różnorodność jest w Izraelu, potem w Luksemburgu, potem Australia. Myśmy wzięli prawie 8 milionów migrantów po II wojnie światowej i proszę zobaczyć, jaki spokój, jak te miasta się rozwijają, jak Australia idzie do przodu. Problem jest, jak z każdym problemem społeczności, jak to kontynuować. Jak zapewnić, że będziemy mieli taki sam kraj za następne 20-30 lat, taki sam spokój społeczny, jak teraz mamy. Dziękuję bardzo. Yale people, 
Where I fit in, I come from the Gadigal tribe of the Dalek, which is based in Sydney, and there I belong to the whale people. And where I've been residing for the last 30 and a half years was in the Wiana Mulligan tribal area, which is in uh, around the Mount Gould area. So uh, it's always nice to go out and give talks, and uh, also I'd like to acknowledge all my black and white brothers and sisters that's passed on in the last 12 months. I am one of the Aboriginal elders of Western Sydney, and become an elder, you have to do lots and lots of work in your community before you get respect in return. We as elders, we go out and teach how to break down barriers and build bridges. We're out in the community trying to make a difference. And I can just say this, that I brought all my values with me and, and come from the eastern shores of Bodney Bay, a place where Lapa is, where I grew up in Aboriginal Reserve. But my elders taught me, taught me well that the reserve, uh, the, the reserve was my university of life. Welcome to, to all of you. Uh, this is a very distinguished conference judged by those who are attending and participating. I have to say I truly believe that there is no better place that I can think of in Australia to hold this conference than here in Western Sydney at one of the key campuses of the University of Western Sydney. Others, of course, at Bankstown and Blacktown and Penrith and Campbelltown and Richmond <coughs> and soon to be a learning centre in Liverpool. Of course, if you look at disadvantage by postcode, you'll find, surprise, surprise, that on virtually every indicator, education, or employment status, or health and welfare, or income, most parts of Greater Western Sydney have lower or poorer outcomes than on the North Shore, or in the Eastern Suburbs, or in the Inner West, or in the city. But visit this region, work or live in this region, study in this region, and of course we know you'll discover a quite different image, a quite different Western Sydney. Tough, hard-working, entrepreneurial, aspirational, exciting, and of course relatively young. And of course, underpinning that energy, racial and religious and ethnic diversity. Because that, in truth, is a large part of what makes Western Sydney, Western Sydney. Western Sydney has far more Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people than any other Australian urban area. It has a greater proportion of migrants and refugees than the rest of Sydney or New South Wales. It has more Sikhs and Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists and yes, let's remember, evangelical Christians than elsewhere in Sydney. Attend the graduations of this university which are held right here. And you will see the future of Australia at first hand, walking across the stage, applauded by their proud parents who in large measure enjoyed no such opportunity. It is now my very great pleasure indeed to introduce His Excellency Sir Peter Cosgrove, to formally open this conference. Sir Peter. Let me start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Barramatta Gaul people, a clan of the Daru people, and pay my respects to all the past and present, Uncle Greg. Thank you very much indeed for your welcome to us all and personally to him and I. Uh, between Seven and Peter, I think of all the dignitaries here tonight, there's too many to name, but uh, uh, there's 
There's been quite a few uh, already mentioned. I add my welcome to theirs. Um, good to see you all here. I feel quite humbled to have been asked out to what is one of the emerging as one of Australia's great universities uh, here at UWS. Um, Peter is a wonderful chancellor. He speaks wonderfully about the university and accurately, I feel. Um, but the success, the success story of the university is is remarkable. Um, the stage for graduations, I vividly recall the number of graduations I did at the Catholic University. I thoroughly endorse what Peter said about the diversity of the young people coming across to receive their testimonies from the Chancellor. Um, all kinds of fashion statements, indeed, he spoke about that. I used to stress out about high heels in the first decade of the, the new millennium. And, of course, I have to dwell on such things as social cohesion. It was a lot of fun and somewhat troubling. Some of the stuff I was doing was in the aftermath of the Cronulla riots, in the shadow of some troubles in Melbourne, attacks on young men and women from the subcontinent, caused, a, caused me to question whether the socially cohesive Australia that we all prized was a finished product set in stone, not to be tampered with, or a work in progress, attention needed. But everywhere I go now, I see our diversity. A week ago, two ago, I was in the Hunter Valley at the opening of the local men's shed. I met Australians there of Italian, Greek, Vietnamese, and Afghan backgrounds, all working together for the makeshift and to give something back to their community. Striving like Billy O, the newest ones amongst them, to fit in as much as they could, to absorb the necessary sinews of our culture, to participate, to belong. And every time a school group visits Government House, I met by the smiling faces of children from all backgrounds and cultures, all taking part in that great school trip to the nation's capital. Two school groups today, both typical of that observation. So we say we're a lucky country. Some would say so because of our vast wealth and resources. But it's really well beyond that. It's because of our people, because of our diversity. A diversity that should not mean, does not mean that we're divided. On the contrary, Australia is one of the most cohesive countries in the world. And every day when we pick up the paper and open it up, we, we test that, we worry about that. Perhaps we say, is it as true as we would like. But that's compared with every other nation on earth. The sort of political, social and racial conflicts you might see in other parts of the world simply don't exist here. Naturally, we have our disagreements and moments of tension. But on the whole, we are extraordinarily resilient, uh, harmonious and cohesive. And we should be extremely grateful for that. Now, research, research by the Scanlon Foundation's Mapping Social Cohesion series indicates that approximately 90% of Australians support multiculturalism and that our social cohesion is strong. Understanding the reasons for this cohesion lies at the very heart of this conference and will no doubt be the subject of much discussion and debate. One source of our cohesion is economic security. And certainly our diversity is a significant economic positive. It brings the skills, energy and innovation that underpin economic growth and drive the creation of wealth. Peter informed me that the greatest concentration in the Sydney area of people from the subcontinent lies in what I'll call the UWS catchment area. But I suspect that our cohesion is rooted in something far more intuitive, far deeper, more tactile than just economic expediency. Cohesion comes from the common values we share as members of a liberal, open and democratic society. These include a respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms, 
freedom of association, freedom of political expression and opinion, a respect for the rule of law, an independent judiciary, and a genuinely free and independent media. These are the things, the values, that truly bind us. And importantly, we back them up with transparent and accountable institutions. The open nature of our Australian society is demonstrated by our rankings in a range of global indicators. We rank second on the Human Development Index. We come in at number four on the Global Freedom Index. And we are ninth on the Economist Democracy Index. Essentially, our cohesion comes from living in a nation of opportunity where everyone can participate, contribute, and pursue their dreams. To pause there, quoting statistics can be troubling. You'll all know of an area, a community, a people, but are not part of our cohesive society, and you'll worry about that. I simply want you to know and to accept that we are always working, but always making progress. For more than 30 years, Australian governments have realised this. They've encouraged multiculturalism. They've supported initiatives such as Harmony Day, the Australian Multicultural Council, the Translating and Interpreting Service, and the National Anti-Racism Strategy. And of course, our host tonight, Professor Shergold, established the Office of Multicultural Affairs in recognition of the importance of good public policy in this area. But not everyone is sold on the virtues of diversity. In many parts of the globe, there are groups who have a very narrow, unidimensional view of society. And some go as far as imposing their extreme ideologies on others. Now, this is a complex problem. And I'm not going to attempt here tonight to oversimplify it. This I can say, that we cannot let such threats undermine our way of being and what unites us. And our most powerful insurance against this lies in continuing to do what has made us so strong and united for so long. And that, of course, is to embrace our diversity and, at the same time, unite behind our values. To keep promoting the social, economic, political and cultural benefits that diversity brings and to recommit to the values and principles that encourage inclusion and cohesion. And crucially to reinforce the democratic institutions and legal frameworks that have served us so well. Our liberties and freedoms have always been our greatest strength and they will continue to be our most potent response to extremism and those that would seek to divide us. I also think we can all do so much more for those on the margins wanting to be part of the mainstream and wanting to belong. Whether it's people with a disability, those from the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transsexual and intersexual community, anyone, those suffering mental illness, new migrants, everyone deserves a fair go. Because it's a fair go that gives people the opportunity to fulfil their potential and to contribute to the, the diverse and cohesive nation that we all benefit from so much. This is in an academic environment, but the work that you're going to consider over the next couple of days is very practical, very necessary. It needs your best wisdom, your genius, and your energy. Thank you for being here. Good luck.
I could see that we are not just a soldier, that we are a national leader who understands how society works. And listening to, the, to you today when you spoke about multiculturalism, when you were mentioning about inclusion, I think they are the topics for this conference. They are very important. I personally believe that multiculturalism will deal well with extremist ideology. Multiculturalism is about unity, is about common values, is about advancing Australia, and certainly not in terms of supporting people who want to hurt our country. Again, thank you very much. Mam na imię Agnieszka Nelson z domu, z domu Szukalska. E, mieszkam w tej chwili w Kamberze. E, jestem bardzo dumną Polką, która właśnie jest tutaj na e, konferencji Advancing Social Community Cohesion, e, którą jest zorganizowana przez pana doktora Seweryna Ozdowskiego. Moim zdaniem jest to fantastyczna e, konferencja, e, bardzo ważny temat na temat social cohesion, e, czyli e, jak w Australii powinni ludzie mieszkać e, w multicultural society. E, ja e, będę jutro wydawała e, lekcję na, na ten temat e, i mi się wydaje, że właśnie jesteśmy, e, żyjemy w pięknym kraju, gdzie wszystkie różne kultury e, razem się zbiegają i e, bardzo mi się podoba to, że można tutaj być Polakiem i mieć e, swoje e, tradycje e, i też być e, prawdziwym Australijczykiem. Mi się wydaje, że to nie są tematy, które, e, które się e, jakby kłócą. E, e, Mam nadzieję, że pan dr Seweryn będzie nadal robił takie konferencje i, i dalej te, te ważne tematy e, wygłaszał i, i pokazywał. I do widzenia. Cześć. We need such conferences, we need such community gatherings in Australia because Australia is a multicultural country and in our society we need cohesion and I think this is something which will be a landmark thing to be done and open it to more public so that there are more people coming. Otherwise, academics come, they present something, and it remains within the converted. So, but it is a great opportunity for UWS and for Australia to bring more cohesion in the community through academia, through public uh, uh, participation, and media, of course. Thank you. Do you live near each other? Are you friends? Yes.
My name's Yvette. I'm a master's student from the University of Canberra and I'm the daughter of migrant refugees from Europe so I had a particular interest in this conference and I was lucky enough to be selected to attend. My colleague Mana will introduce herself. Hello, this is Mana and I'm an international student at the University of Canberra. I come from Iran and I was also lucky to get selected. Um, my name is Atem Atem. Uh, I am from the Australian National University. Um, I have three of my friends here uh, who will introduce themselves. They are affiliated with this university. So, uh, Hello, my name is Katrine. Hi, my name is Jocelyn. I'm Daniel. Okay, I'm going to ask them what they can say about this university. Um, and I'll start with you. What, what one thing that you can say about this university that you like? Uh, it's really amazing, yeah. It's, it's good to be here. Uh, can you say more about amazing? It's good to, to be studying AWS and yeah, it's all, all of what I do now as a student. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, you are from Macquarie University and you have heard that um, it's amazing here. Yes. Do you have any opinion on <laughs> this university? Well, I'm originally from the West as well, so diversity is a really um, amazing thing and we get to learn so much from different cultures and different people. Um, yeah, I think it's very important to have dialogue about important issues and to learn from each other as well because there's so much to learn from what we don't know and I think this conference, you know, paves the way for that, so that's really important and I'm so happy to be here and like meet amazing people as well in like different fields, so that's cool. And Daniel is a graduate of this university and probably has a lot to say. Oh uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm Daniel and then I graduated here in this auditorium and it's my pleasure to be here again and now I'm working in the community sector. I've been with Angelica for a few years now and helping like people that need to arrive. So one of my projects I'm working on now is uh, called Diverse and Social Cohesion, which is looking at community harmony. So having this conference is really good and I guess it's one of the things that uh, people need to do. We learn through like we have we learn through having the same values and community cohesion to me is about sharing values and living in harmony. And one thing that when you live in harmony you achieve your cohesion and then the community uh, could you know could grow and people live in love and that's all about today and I'm looking forward to the rest of the conference days. Thank you. Uh, we have another friend here who can say something about the university. Introduce yourself and... Um, okay, I'm Vaikuntha Subedi from Macquarie University, psychology student. Uh, about this university, um, I know it's a very prestigious university and have a long history and specifically about, since I'm in this program today, what I can say is uh, this about community cohesion program. It's it's very well designed program and it's the program that a social or psychology department should um, organize. It, it's very practical thing and the, 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 um, the co contents of the program or three-day program is so inspiring and so attractive and so needy that I believe most of the people should attend such kind of program and so well organized. Yeah, I can't say about that. Thank you. Um, and just final thing for me, um, I think the, the University of Western Sydney um, is a great institution and um, and I say that because it's placed in Western Sydney, um, a, a, a part of Sydney that hosts, you know, don't quote me on this, but I think something like two, three million people. Um, and I am personally surprised that there was, there, there is not more than one university here. So the University of Western Sydney play a very, very important role here to sort of serve this massive population um, that is multicultural um, and I think it, it's great and we need in institutions like this here and more of them because Western Sydney is the place to be in the next 10, 20 years and we need more and Western Sydney University is leading the way. Thank you.